This video is going to be to help you make a pendant. Last time you got to make a pendant using Sculpey. This time we're going to use wire to help us finish this off. In this video, I'll also give some information about finishing backings on rings or earrings that we made in another video as well. I'm gonna set those off to the side though, so we can get started with this. So for my pendant, I need my pendant piece that has a hole in it. I need a piece of wire that I've cut off of one of these artistic wire options. Now there are different colors, so remember, you may choose something that stands out, or you might choose something like I did that blends in. There is a plastic ring around these. Make sure that you twist that little plastic ring, not take it off the surface, just to get some or wire out. So I just take and twist and pull, twist and pull until I've got the length I need. So I twist and I pull. If you do take it off because you feel like you need a lot of wire, just notice that it will start to unwind. So make sure that if you do that, you keep it nice and tight, pull off what you need, and then put the plastic back on right away. Now I've already cut my piece, so I'm gonna wind this back on really quick. And then I'm just gonna put my plastic end back on there. Now, with my piece of wire, here's what I'm going to start doing. I'm gonna take my wire and I'm going to put it through my bead. You can see that it's kind of hanging there off of my wire. Then I'm going to bend up the back piece and the front piece, just so that it's kind of, again, looped around the piece. I'm gonna take my shorter end now and pull it forward and I'm going to start wrapping. Now I'm just using my fingers for this first step, but I can do this with a wire tool, one of my wire tools as well. But this first one, I can go ahead and just use my end. Now when I can't wrap anymore, that's when I need to start using my tool to help twist. Okay, now I do wanna be careful. I started twisting too tight and I wasn't able to keep it attached in the spot where I want. So I've got mine in place. And now what I've got to do with the rest of this is make my pendant that will hang on my necklace. Now I'm going to show you that today too. So again, I'm going to use my both these tools. So I have a pliers, that's a needle nose pliers, and I have the round-ended pliers for making loops. I'm going to start with my round-ended one. And what I'm going to do is I've got all this long tail and I may or may not use that, but I want to have it there. So I'm going to take my tool here and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to about a little ways up from where I was winding before, not too far. I'm going to just put my crimp or kind of crimp this between. So there's my end kind of being held in place. Now I'm going to take the wire and I'm going to tightly wrap it around until it makes like a figure four like that. Now I'm going to hold this in place because I want to make sure that that doesn't move. And now I'm going to start wrapping my wire back around my creation. Now, like I said, I've got a lot of wire and the reason I did that was because I wanna make sure that that wire can make a lot of wraps. I'm holding this in place. Now, now that I've got it, I may wanna hold it with another tool and I can use my needle nose player and I can keep wrapping or I can just, again, kinda of hold it and wrap with my other hand. Now. This is going to make a really nice kind of decorative end and how night neatly I wrap it is also going to change how it looks. Now when I'm all done, I wanna make sure that that end gets pressed in really well and I can kind of pinch and tighten if I need to on anything that I did not get tightened before. So I noticed mine was kind of loose in some spots. So I'm just kind of pressing to help make it tighten up. Okay. And there we go. Now, my pendant here is ready for me to use. Oh, I unwound a little bit when I was tightening it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of pinch and tighten here so you get it ready. Now, don't twist the wire too much because it can break. But you guys can see what I have now is this really nice piece of metal that's holding on the end here. Now, I can make this little bit here shorter if I want when I'm making it. I don't have to make it quite as long as I did. I thought I'd make mine long just to make it interesting. If I wanted, I could also attach beads in here to make it more interesting so that I could have a little bead holding it in place and I could make it look however I want. Now, once I've got my pendant ready, I'm going to need some different tools. Now, I'm gonna need 
fastener, because I'm gonna make this something that can go around my neck. So I'm gonna take out one of my fasteners. Now there are lots in here. I'm gonna use one of these silver magnetic ones. So I'm gonna set it down. I'm gonna close that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of my jump rings and crimps. Now I'm gonna make a chain. So I'm gonna start by just grabbing two jump rings that I know I need. And I'm gonna leave all the crimps be because I don't need those. So again, I'll close this up and put this back. Now the very last thing that I'm going to need is some of my white or my metal chain. So I've got that sitting here. And again, I'm going to measure a piece that's longer than what I think I need. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm kind of just measuring mine against a piece of paper. Again, for a necklace, I usually find that I wanna have it about 24 inches. If I want it shorter, I can make it shorter. If I want it longer, I can make it longer. But I've measured 24 inches here by just laying it down alongside a piece of paper. Okay, now what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take my wire cutter, which on my needle nose players, there is a wire cutter, but I can go and get, grab one from the cabinet. And I have to press really hard, so watch. I'm gonna squeeze as hard as I can, and it cuts one of the links off of here, okay? Now, the extra chain here that's on here, I wind back on and I put it away. Someone else can use it. Now my chain here, I have two ends. One that it was cut before by someone else and the new end that's been cut by me. I'm gonna take my jump rings today and I'm gonna attach this on. Now, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take my first jump ring and I'm gonna put my fastener on it. So I just kind of sling it on here. Now this jump ring was open. I'm gonna show you in a second how we open another jump ring because this one's not. So I'm gonna slide it on and then I'm gonna slide this through my chain. Now, this one's a little thicker jump ring so I have to really kind of work it on there. Once I've got it on, I take my pliers here and I'm gonna press that shut. Now. I need to make sure it closes all the way, so I may have to do kind of some extra pressing and some extra movement to make it really close. If it doesn't close easy, ask for some help if you need it, okay? Now, that jump ring attached to this fastener means that now my chain and my fastener are connected together. I'm gonna go to the other end, and now I'm going to open this jump ring to use it. So I gotta find where it's connected. I did, it's right here and I'm going to separate it by pushing my thumb one way and using my needle nose to pull the other way. I never pull it apart. I always kind of just pull it away from each other. I don't need to open it up wide, but again, this time I'm gonna put it onto my chain. Oops, I'm gonna do it without my needle nose. That makes it easier. So I'm gonna put it on my chain and then I'm gonna go ahead and take my other end of my fastener that's not attached yet. I'm gonna slide that onto my jump ring. And then again, I'm going to pinch it shut, nice and tight. Oh, mine doesn't wanna go right away, so there we go. Now, what I have right now is a chain for my necklace that has a jump ring that helps hold the fastener in place so that I can close this. If I have my necklace piece, I should attach it before I put on my other side. So I'm gonna show you how to attach it one more time just because I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. Oopsies, these are magnetic so they kind of hold together. I'm gonna open up my jump ring one more time. I'm gonna take it off of my chain and then I'm gonna slide my pendant on there. I'll slide or put my chain back on my jump ring and then again, I'm going to pinch or pinch it shut. Now, what I've got, oops, it picked up part of my chain, is I've got my fastener with my jump rings holding my chain together, and on the end of it is my pendant that I made. So I can make this necklace, and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you guys can see it better. Again, I have my necklace ready to go. My pendant is attached to my chain. Now I also made a matching ring, like I said, and some earrings to go with mine. So what I'm gonna need next, is I'm gonna go into my blue tub here, 
and I'm going to get out a ring back. This is going to get glued on to here, and I'm gonna ask a teacher to help me do that, and I'll arrange it the way I want. So again, if I want that triangle to be facing up, this will become my ring that I can slide on my finger. And my earrings, I close up my container here, and my earrings, I'm going to need to get out my earring box, open it up, and in here there are plastic baggies that have backs and are pegs. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a peg out for each earring, because I have two earrings, I need two of these. So I grab one, two. I had an extra, so I'm gonna put it back. I'm gonna zip my bag up tight and put it away. And I'm gonna grab two backs, because with the pegs I need backs. So I grab one, two backs, and then I zip them up tight and I put them away. Now, again, same thing as before, I'll bring these up to my teacher and I'll have them glue with special glue my earring back onto the back of here. And then I can wear these as earrings with my matching necklace and my matching ring if I want. So again, I'm going to have, again, I don't have the glue on me right now. So I'd have my ring, my earrings, and my necklace that can all match with each other. When the glue is dry, these are ready to take home and ready to keep and ready to wear. These can be wow pieces, so remind yourself, if you make a set like this, this might be a great example of something that you turn into a wow piece that could be put for display.